Hi, I'm Tim Daniels from lapsoftheshutter.com and this is a quick overview of five ways to blend photos to create incredible landscape photography. This covers the most common situations you'll find yourself in as a landscape or cityscape photographer, shooting into the sun, blending photos taken at different times of day, blending moving objects between photos, double processing the same photo and blending both versions together, and blending multiple skies into one. This tutorial is also available in text form on lapsoftheshutter.com, along with other free goodies for Lightroom and Photoshop that you can freely download. Let's start with shooting into the sun. When you're on location and shooting into the sun, it helps to take bracketed exposures. Although modern cameras can capture a huge amount of dynamic range, they still struggle with very bright light sources like the sun. Often I find that the sun will create lens flares and light bounces around inside the lens. So if you're foreground exposure, it's a good idea to block the sun using a finger or something similar. I first process all my photos in Lightroom using the Lightroom Develop system, freely available from lapsoftheshutter.com. These two are the results of that processing, now opened in Photoshop. Unfortunately, we can't blend photos in Lightroom yet, but it's nonetheless a very simple process to blend photos like these two in Photoshop, using luminosity masks. I simply open both photos into the same workspace in Photoshop, making sure the sky exposure is on top. Then click on the Channels tab and control click on the thumbnail for the RGB channel. This selects the brightest pixels in the photo, in this case the sun and sky. You can see that some of the sky at the top where it is darker has been cut off, but this won't be a problem. In this case, you can actually do a good job selecting the sky by hand, as the border between sky and ground is distinct, but this technique is handy to know for more complex situations, as we will see later. Moving back to the Layers tab, you simply have to make sure the sky layer is selected, then click to add a layer mask. The luminosity mask will be automatically applied. This isn't quite good enough, so I use a large soft brush to broadly follow the outline of the sky. Then I'll return to the Channels tab, control clicking on the RGB thumbnail once again to reload the luminosity mask. This will provide a firm boundary for the paintbrush so that we can be sure we will only paint out the sky and not the rocks. We could of course complete this mask by hand by zooming into 100% and carefully painting around the edges of the rocks and the sky. But this would be slow going. Using a luminosity mask means that we can constrain the paintbrush and complete the mask of the sky in only a few seconds. Time blending is very similar to blending exposures taken into the sun. Instead of there only being seconds or fractions of a second between exposures, there might be minutes or hours. Here's two photos of Santorini, already processed in Lightroom using the Lightroom Develop system, and taken from the same spot on the same evening. I like the sky in the sunset photo, and the street lights in the blue hour photo, so how to blend them. In this case, I'll use luminosity masks again, but with an individual colour channel. Think of this as a refined luminosity mask. We will follow the same procedure as for the previous photo, but this time we will control click on the red channel to select the brightest red pixels in the photo. This is a very effective way of selecting street lights in nighttime and blue hour photos, as the street lights are usually the only things in a photo that are both bright and contain large amounts of red. In this case though, the selection does contain part of the sky, which we can fix later. As before, we return to the Layers tab, make sure the Blue Hour photo is selected, and add the Luminosity mask as a layer mask. It doesn't look like it, but we're nearly finished. Simply make sure the layer is selected by clicking on the layer thumbnail, then use the Quick Selection tool to select the sky. Then, select the layer mask by clicking on its thumbnail, and use the paintbrush with colour set to black to paint over the sky. You don't have to worry about accuracy as the selection you made of the sky will constrain the brush to only that area. I could finish up by making a few minor additional changes to the mask and to the photo, but in this case I won't. That leaves us with a basic stormy sunset with street lights switched on. If you want to go even further than this, it's possible to combine colour channel luminosity masks with blending modes for an even more subtle effect. Take a look at the video of a sunset in Yokohama, Japan for more. 
But what about if you have objects that move between exposures, that you want all contained in one photo? I had this problem in Prague, where as the sun rose and the nice light faded, flocks of birds began circling overhead and flying around the bridge. I pushed the ISO up on my camera so I could get a fast shutter speed, and took several photos of these birds. Now I need to blend them into my long exposure of the same location. First, load them into the same workspace with the birds on top, then simply use the magic wand tool to select the birds. You need to make sure that the sample or layers box is unticked, and you may need to increase the tolerance if the birds are not well separated from the background or are particularly small. In this case, a tolerance of 70 seems to do the trick. Holding down shift as you paint over the birds adds to the selection. Then, you can add a layer mask to automatically blend the selection you have made. If the objects don't quite seem to fit, you can try changing blending modes of the bird layer. Darken often works well. And here's the result. There's a couple of small errors that could be fixed by using the paintbrush or by redoing the mask. Sometimes you take a photo that doesn't quite work on its own. The secret is to double process it, changing colour and tone and then blending that second version into the first. Here's a photo of Rome being developed using the Lightroom Develop system. I make some changes to dynamic range and colour, then I export the photo. Then I reset and do the same again, making different processing choices. This time I might change the tone and choose a different colour grade from the Lightroom Develop system. Then export and load both photos into Photoshop. Here are two versions of a blue hour over the Vatican in Rome that we just created in Lightroom. The first looks good, but the street lights are flat, so I process the second version with the aim of improving the street lights and reflections. There's no need to use luminosity masks if you're blending double process photos, and they often will not work in any case. It's usually simpler to hand draw a layer mask using a large soft brush, varying the opacity as you go. You don't have to spend a long time drawing your layer masks, but of course the longer you do spend, the more accurate the final result will be. The final result in this case is subtle, but the result is much closer to the final photo I wanted to create, and this gives much more room to work with for further processing in Photoshop using the Photoshop Color Control Action Pack, available for free from lapsoftheshutter.com. Often, the skies as seen from cities can be flat and boring, and it can be difficult to capture any stars, like in this photo of Kyoto. If you are lucky enough to visit somewhere where there is minimal light pollution, like this desert in the far west of Rajasthan, India, you can photograph the stars, but you miss out on the city. So why not combine them? First, you need to prepare both photos in Lightroom. The Lightroom Develop system, freely available from lapsoftheshutter.com, has an isolate starry sky preset that is designed to prepare photos of the stars for blending by increasing their dynamic range. So, open both photos into Photoshop, with the stars on top. You may want to switch its visibility off and select the base layer, so that you can then use the magic wand tool to select the dull, flat sky that you want to replace. You may need to change the tolerance, and then hold down shift as you click to add to the mask. Switch on the stars layer, and then click add a layer mask to add the selection automatically as a layer mask. You probably want to change the layer blending mode to luminosity, as this removes all colour from the stars layer. And you can change the opacity to get the blend to your liking. It's that simple to add a starry sky. You can do the same with dull overcast skies, replacing them with powerful sunsets. This photo of the Forbidden City in Beijing was taken at sunrise, although you wouldn't know it thanks to the smog. But I like the photo, and you don't see many photos of the water frozen like this. I tried two or three times to get a decent sky here, but it wasn't happening, so I've had to add it myself. This sunset was taken in Scotland, and is one of many sky photos that I have in my library. These photos were actually shot at different focal lengths, 17 versus 24 millimeters. Usually I would try to match focal lengths between photos for blending, but in this case the difference is minimal, and what difference there actually is gives the clouds greater prominence and power, which works for this photo. 
So, open both photos into Photoshop with the sky layer on top, then turn the sky opacity down to 50%, and use the move tool to match up the horizons between the photos. Put the opacity back to 100%, and double click on the right hand edge of the sky layer to open the layer styles box. Change the blend mode to multiply, and using the underlying layer blend if box, move the tabs on the left over to the right until the dull sky begins to appear. If you hold down ALT while sliding the tabs, you can feather the effect. And that's the sky blended. I can do some further work with a layer mask to perfect the edges of the blend. And if you want to make the effect even more realistic, you can copy the sky layer, rotate it vertically, move it to the bottom of the photo to provide a reflection in the ice. You might want to stretch it a bit to replicate the lens distortion that should be present, and of course reduce the opacity to a very low number. This tutorial is only part of the totally free Landscapes Masterclass series available at lapsoftheshutter.com. You can also download, again for free, the Lightroom Develop System, the Photoshop Color Control Action Pack, and the Photoshop Landscape Color Grades. To download all three, just enter your email address at lapsoftheshutter.com.